Welcome back guys, welcome to the first day of Monk March. Really happy to have you with me today because we're going to be looking at the audio manager and we've done something like that in the past, however this time around it's much better. Um, we're crossfading music which is it's amazing. Quick heads up before we head to the content. When you work with sounds in Unity, you need to have an audio listener in your scene. Usually it's there by default, it's on the main camera, so that's not a big deal. I don't think you'll forget about it. When you have an audio source that plays sound effects, in case you have two sound effects playing at the same time, what you want to do is use play one shot instead of just play. And one last thing, the volume value on the audio source is always in between zero and one. I want to remind everybody that the files for this video, everything is already typed down. I also included some sounds that I've made not so good but they're down there in the description down below you can uh, head over to the website and the website there is the download section you'll find everything there um, for 100 XP in this case now 100 XP is easy to get you just have to subscribe to the channel so if you haven't done that yet please hit subscribe on the channel log in with your YouTube and you'll be able to download that without any problem all right so we are in a brand new scene called audio manager and there is nothing else in there the project is empty the project is clean Let's go ahead and start working on this thing. First thing you'll notice is that you have your main camera and this one contains the audio listener. Let's leave it there. We're going to need one at one point um, for testing. So I'm gonna keep the main camera. I do not need the directional light though. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a script that will be able to be called from anywhere else. So if you're in your character selection screen, if you're in the game itself, you're gonna be able to call that script and make sure that a sound is playing or a music is playing. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a new object. I will create an empty game object. I'll call this one the audio manager. And I'm gonna go ahead, add a new component that I also call audio manager, just like this. Now, I will not create um, audio sources on this. So I will not add audio sources. What I'll do is I will actually do it manually through the script. The reasoning behind this is that if I don't have an audio manager in this scene or in the scene I'm actually playing right now and I wanna call a dot play. Well, my script will create a new game object and it will then add itself um, some audio sources. If I do it the other way around, I'm going to have to instantiate a prefab of a audio manager that then contains those audio sources. I'd rather just do it manually in the script. So let's go ahead, open this one up. Um, we're gonna keep using mono behavior in this case and I'm gonna go at the top, start defining a couple of um, static field. At the top here, I've created a private static audio manager, so a private instance of this audio manager. And then just beneath it, I'll create a property that will allow me to set this and also to get it from somewhere else. In our get section, let's go ahead and check if we have a existing instance already. So if instance is equal equal to null, that means we don't have one. And um, if that's the case, let's go ahead and look for one first. So let's do an instance, find object of type. Um, I know find object of type is not the best thing to use most of the time, but it's a one-time thing that would happen. Uh, it's not something that's going to be put in the update. So having a find object of type is going to look through all your active scenes, the one that are currently playing right now, and look for a component type of audio manager. Now, we don't want this to happen. Um, we want to have this already set when we start the game, but in case you're messing up and in case you, you're starting a game from a different scene and you just don't have that whole preload or flow going on, then this will find one if there's one. And if it doesn't find any, so if instance is still equal to null, then let's go ahead and create a new one just like so. Oops. Instance is gonna be equal to a new game object. And um, new game object takes a couple of field. The first one is the actual name. So let's go ahead and say something like um, spam audio manager. And the second field is a type of component so we can send it anything we want in here so I'll do type of audio manager and it's going to add this script on top of my game object now since we're looking for a audio manager we're gonna go ahead and do a get component of that very specific audio manager that we just created like so and then at the end of the get let's make sure we return the instance now in the set section, what I'll do is I'll actually make sure this one is private. So we cannot set the audio manager from any other script but this one. Um, this way we're not interfering with it. Or if you have another programmer that works with you in the same project, he cannot set the audio manager and mess everything up um, unless he's inside of the audio manager script itself. Okay, so we're pretty much done with the static instance. Now let's go ahead and have a look at um, 
spawning some components that we'll need. So those components are the audio sources. So I've created myself a region for the fields. Let's go ahead and declare those. So I want to have a audio source that I'll call music source. I want to have another one that I'll call um, SFX source, so sound effects. And then I'll do something else that I'll explain to you guys in a moment what it does. I'm creating a second music source. So an audio source is only able to play one looping sound at a time, um, or music in this case. What I want to do with a second music source is that if we swap from one scene to another and we want to have a nice transition, like a, a cross fade transition, which means having both songs playing at the same time and, and they just transition without having to cut one completely and then start the other, then I'll be using two audio source and there's going to be like a, a certain transition period where those two sources are playing at the same time. So let's go ahead and declare ourselves a private void awake or a private void start. Um, and we're going to make sure, the first thing that we'll do is make sure we don't destroy this instance. To do so, let's do a don't destroy on load and this.game object. Now we're also going to need to create those sources. So we have the fields, however, we never really add the components. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So this simple line will do game object, which is ourself right now. So it could be this.game object, add component of type audio source. We want to do that twice for the second music source and then a third time for the SFX. Now the reason we're separating the SFX and also the music is, as I've mentioned, we can only play one sound at a time. So you can have the music playing and then on top of that, you play the SFX. However, there's a small little tweak you can do with SFX to play multiple of that um, sound. We'll check that in a moment. Okay, and one last thing we need to do is um, with our music source, we want them to loop. So you always want to be creating music that can start over. You don't want to have a track that lasts three minutes, and as soon as the track is over, you don't hear anything else. So of course, loop the music tracks. And since we're spawning them through code, we also have to set it through code because we won't have the inspector to help us with that. So music source one and two dot loop is equal to true. And we're done with the initialization. All right, so if we want to go in the order that we've put above, let's go ahead and start declaring a play music function. This is where we start actually playing. Those functions are going to be the one we call from outside. Now, I also want to add the audio clip as a parameter because um, we, we got to define which music actually plays. And I like to have the other person, the person who's going to be calling this script, do it. So play music, make sure it takes in a music clip as a parameter. Now, what I'm going to do is take the music source um, and do dot clip is equal to the music clip we have and make sure that we press play. So music source dot play. So the big problem with this code right now is that if we're playing a second track on the music source number two, so if we're playing another music on the second source and we then call the play music function, we're going to have both of them play very loud at the same time. And that's not something we want. So um, let's go ahead and modify this code a little bit so we know exactly which is the source that is playing right now or that should be playing right now and we'll modify that one instead. So what I'll do is I'll go to the top here in my field. I'll declare myself a new private bool and I'll just say something like first music source is playing. Basically, I could have used a byte as well. Um, anything here would have done. It's just to know which source is playing right now. So if it's a uh, true then I'm going to assume it's the first source. If it's false, I'm going to assume it's the second one. Back in our play music function, I'll determine which one is playing with this operation right here. So we're going to look at which source is active. And I'm going to do a ternary operator to decide. OK, so OK, so if the first music source is playing is true, therefore, we're going to use the first music source. Else we're on the second one. Now, instead of using music source down here, I'll use the active source. And also make sure that the sound is up as well because we're gonna be playing with the volume um, very, very shortly. One quick thing about the volume, it's in between zero and one. So if you wanna set your volume to mute, basically you put it on zero. If you wanna set it to the max, you put it on one. Okay, so that's going to work for the play music. Now let's go ahead and do a quick one for the play SFX before we jump into more um, advanced FX. So, Exact same thing, exact same signature, play SFX, and we want a audio clip to go in parameter. What we're gonna do here is quite simple. We're gonna do SFX source dot play one shot, very important you add the one shot, and then we play the clip. 
All right, so quick warning about the play one shot. If you're using play by itself like this, what's going to happen is that if you have two clips overlapping, well, it's going to completely mute the previous clip and then play the new one. It's going to cut that clip apart. However, if you want to do say gunshots and you have multiple gunshots going on at the same time, um, then you want, to, you want to use something like play one shot because then what it's going to do, it's going to be a little bit more expensive on, on the CPU, but you're going to be able to overlap sounds and it's going to sound great. You're not going to have any cuts. All right, with this, you have the bare minimum to make your game work. However, it's not quite cool. It's not the, the thing you actually want. Um, so let's go ahead and define a little bit more of that. Let's add a little bit more effects and also let's just play around with that a bit more. So what I'm going to do down here, I'll do a public void play SFX and I'll just add one more parameter. So audio clip, clip, and I'll also add a float volume. That's the first thing we'll do. We'll decide whether or not we want to play something at the high pitch or not high pitch, sorry, but high volume or low volume. So we'll give the option to the person who calls this. And here we go. We have an overload for play SFX. That is quite easy, quite simple. The fastest one we could have done. Now, um, where things are going to get a little bit more complicated is in the music. So I'd like to do a lot of things with the music since now we're playing with two different music sources. So we're going to start with the easiest one. The easiest one is going to be play music with fade. Um, what I mean by this is that if you want to play a music and you want to transition to a new music, then we're going to fade the first one and then, um, well, fade out the first one and fade in the new one. So we have a smooth transition. This will take in the new audio clip, so we can call it new clip if you want, um, and also a float transition time. If we don't define it, let's put a default value of one. So in case I just wanna do play music with fade and I don't define a transition time, it's going to assume it's on the one right now. Just like we did in the play music, we have to know which one is currently active. So I'll take this snippet of code and I'll put it in my new function right here. Now at this point, we have to update a number, so we have to update the volume in this case over multiple frames. And to do so, I'm going to use a coroutine. Ah, but we don't have a coroutine just yet. Let's go ahead and declare that right here. We, we do not need this one to be public. We're never going to be calling it from anywhere else but this script. So let's go ahead and do that right here. I enumerator. So if you can't find I enumerator, um, make sure you add system.collection. It's right here. So system.collection, you'll find it at the top there, usually in the default script. Okay, so with that private enumerator, I'm gonna say something like update music with fade. That's gonna be the name. So with the parameters right now, I'll be using the audio source. So I'll call this one the active source. I'll also take in the audio clip. So I'll just call this one a new clip and the transition time. So we're basically just sending all the same data as we had before. So let's go ahead and do transition time. Open this one up. All right, so it gets a little bit more complicated right here. The first thing I'll do in this function is I'll make sure the source is active and also playing. To do so, we'll do a simple check. So if active source, if it's not playing, like so, make sure you add the um, exclamation mark in front. Then we're just going to do active source dot play. From that point on, we're going to declare ourselves a float T, which is basically going to be our transition float and we are going to do our for loop with a fade out comment beneath, um, just above it. So go ahead and type in for, double tap tab. If you're on Visual Studio, you get the full for loop. Here's what I'll do. First, I'll make sure T is actually set to zero. Now we're going to keep on iterating as long as T is smaller than the transition time. So whatever we receive in parameter right here. So as long as T is smaller, then transition time, we're going to go ahead and increment t. What are we going to be incrementing that by? Well, we'll do time dot delta time. So time delta time. Every second is going to gain one as long as we're not past the transition time. And once we're past that point, then of course, um, this will pretty much end. To make sure this is actually updated over multiple frame, I'm going to do a yell to return null. And let's do our update. So what do we have to do right here? Just active source dot volume, and it's gonna be equal to one minus T divided by transition time. Let's have a quick look at this. So basically it's a fade out, um, which means our first music is going to start at one. And then for every second that goes by, it's gonna get reduced a little bit. So at this point, after the for loop, 
we know that our song is completely faded out, we don't hear anything. So at this point, what we can do is put the new song on and start doing the fade in. Um, and we'll do it like that. So we'll start by stopping our source. We have to do that. I don't know why, but we have to. I think once we, um, once we swap the clip, it does that automatically. So what I'm doing here is I'm making sure to turn off the same exact one we're going to be using. So I'm turning off the, the active source, then I change the audio clip with the new music, and then we're going to start playing it again. So audio source dot clip, no, sorry, dot play. <laughs> there we go. And by doing this, now we just change our song and we're ready to fade in again. So we'll do the exact same thing. I'll copy the fade out, replace it by fade in, and we'll do active source dot volume. Now it's going to equal just t divided by transition time. So eventually, once we're done with the whole transition time, is going to be equal to one. And that's going to be our piece of code for the update music with fade. Now it's time to actually start it up. So back in our play music with fade, I'll do a start code routine, update music with fade, and then we'll send in our parameters. So active source is the one we defined just at the top. The new clip is called new clip, and transition, transition time is also called transition time. And just like that, we now have a very, very easy fade. And uh, yeah, that's all we need. Okay, now we have one more thing I'd like to do before we wrap this up, is uh, we'd like to actually update that with multiple song at the same time. So this is where our second music source comes in. We'll do the exact same type of setup as we did with the update with fade with a couple of modifications. So I'll save you the typing. I'll go ahead and just copy it directly. It's a little bit different as you'll see. So play music with crossfade. Now here is what is going to happen. We're going to find out which one is the active source, just like we've done previously. We're also going to find out which one isn't. So basically I'm just swapping the two around over here. Okay, now once we have those two reference, what I'll do is I'll swap my Boolean. So first music source is playing. It's gonna be equal to not first music source is playing. So this way I'm always swapping no matter what and I'm always swapping to the different one. Now at the same time as the previous music is playing, I am starting the new one with the new clip. So assign the new clip first and then I'm starting the new music at the very exact same time. Um, if we head down here in the start coroutine, we are going to need our private enumerator. So again, like I said, I'm going to save you that typing and I'll just completely paste it. This one is much shorter actually. And here it is. So I'm starting coroutine, don't forget to do that first. Update music with crossfade is the name of my new function, sending in the active source, the new source, and also how long I want the crossfade to be. Here's what I do. Simply create a new transition float, and then with the same exact um, type of uh, logic we had before, what I'm doing is I'm setting both the fade in and fade out at the same time on the different sources. So the original volume, it starts high, and then over time, it goes down. That's why it's one minus this new value. And the other one around, well, you know where it is. It starts from zero and it goes all the way to one. Once I'm done, I make sure to stop the original audio source. And here we have a pretty small script for pretty much all the audio in our game or the game we're gonna be making this month. So it's very simple. I'd like to actually add two more, um, two more function. I'll just simply copy. You'll see that in a second. Here they are. So set music volume, set SFX volume. I'm basically just taking the volume and, and setting them. Um, why am I doing that? Because I wanna be able to change like, the value of the, the, the music volume and also the SFX volume in the future in say an option menu. So I'm giving myself the option to do that in the future by exposing those two to the public. And just like that, we have created our script. Okay, that's quite easy, right? Let's go ahead and uh, test this one out in the game. Well, to test it out, we're going to need another script that we'll call Audio Manager Test. And this one, trust me, is gonna be very, very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and declare it right now. Of course, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it's a good way to show you how to implement this in the game. So Audio Manager Test, I'll leave it as a mono behavior. I'll give myself a couple of audio at the top. So button click, music one, music two. They're all public, so basically I can assign them directly in the inspector. Instead, what I could have done is um, could have serialized those fields like so. In fact, I like doing that a lot more nowadays, so. Here we go, a little cleanup on the way. Um, what I'm going to do now is simply play 
play sounds on button click. So private void update, and I'm looking, okay, am I pressing on one? If I'm pressing on one, let's go ahead and play a normal SFX using the normal place FX function. What I'm sending in is my button click SFX and the volume. If I press on my second key, it's going to play my first music track. If I press on the third one, play the second music track. Now, if I press on the fourth, it's gonna do a fade, so the normal fade. Five, it's going to do the fade with new music. Um, six, now it does a cross fade, so that, that's gonna be quite interesting. With this script in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop it somewhere in the scene, can be really anywhere, doesn't really matter. Um, I'll put it on my camera, and I'll go ahead and play some sounds. Now, lucky me, I do have some sounds that I've made. They're quite bad, but uh, they're gonna do the job for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that. So here are my sounds. I have the musics, my two musics, and also the sound effects. Now remember that all of this can be downloaded directly on the website. So head down to the description if you don't have sound and you, and you wanna test it out, or if you wanna have the whole code, you can always head down to download and you'll find the audio manager. This is actually the first one we're doing. So it's a big test at the same time. Um, let's go ahead, take our three clips, and I'm going to drag and drop them to their, to their respective slots. So, game scene and character selection. All right, so head inside of the game, press play, and make sure this button is not clicked. If this button is clicked, you're gonna have a bad day. So make sure this one is not clicked. Um, and at this point, you can just press on the keyboard and hear if you have any sounds. Okay, so here I am in the scene. I have the audio manager test, the new script we've made. I also have a audio listener. It doesn't have to be on the same object, but in this case it is. And I'm going to press on one. And you might hear the sounds two times because of my microphone. <laughs> Sorry about that. However, as you could tell, if I press one on the, um, this is not on the knob pad, so it's alpha one, therefore it has to be on top of your uh, QWE. You know, it's on top of your keyboard, basically. That's one, that's two. So that would be my music. And I'm going to mute myself as I go through all the numbers. All right, so as you heard, we got all of those. So the music works fine if you're just starting it on its own. So if you're just pressing two or three in this case, it just starts, it kills the other music, it takes the spot, that's perfect. The second one, what it did is a small fade. So it faded out, we had no sound for a couple of frame, and then we started with the new music. And then um, the last set, so the cross fades, what they did is that they played the two music together, and then they did a very smooth swap in between them for three seconds basically, so the transition time was very, very small in this case. Yep, three seconds. And that's it guys, we've done it. Thank you so much for watching the first actual tutorial of our new brand. Guys, I wanna also remind you that we have a, um, a Facebook page, we have Discord, we have all of these other things that you'll find in the description down below. The reason I wanna bring you to Facebook is because the schedule is right here. So if you're wondering what we're gonna be doing tomorrow, well, just look at the thing. Um, today is the 1st of March, tomorrow is going to be 2nd, so character selection in this case. And one last thank you to everybody who's joined Discord as well, we had a blast yesterday when, when we released this uh, initially and a lot of people joined, so I was quite happy to see a lot of you guys move over from N3K to this new brand. So again, can't be more thankful than that, we also passed our 100 subscriber in the very first day. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling quite good about that, I'm feeling really really happy, so once more. Thank you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.